All right. Our next game is Knights of the Crystallion, which was nominated by at Withag on Twitter and developed by Bill Williams, um, published by U.S. Gold, those purveyors of quality. For the Amiga, earliest known release date is 1990. <laughs> no month, no day. Uh, in the in the United States, um, this is really a, it was released in the United States first. I didn't actually grab that one. I didn't that's notice. The best well, information we have. Uh, yeah, honestly, I couldn't really find a lot of info on this game. I just assumed that because a company called U.S. Gold released it, it's wasn't either, U.S. Gold based in Europe though. Oh, shoot. I believe so. But <laughs> isn't Bill Williams American? Yes, he was. Uh, he yeah. was American. We, we, info in this game has been very scarce. I'm not going to lie. This is I don't been, understand what this game is. I, I think the first thing we should probably talk about the creator because we've done a lot of research on him. He's got a really interesting story. Yeah, no, uh, I actually want to discuss Bill Williams more than the actual game in question. He made a game by the name of Alley Cat, which I played a lot as a kid. It's really ridiculous. You have to have this cat like not get hit by boots and go through all these mini games and whatnot. It's, it's a cute and I think really fun arcade type game, but he's done a lot more than that. Uh, Cal, take it away. Well, I mean, Alley Cat is very, 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 very famous. The original concept for it was from a guy named John Harris, so it's not purely Bill Williams, but uh, it's it was a game that was loaded on pretty much, you know, it's one of those games that if you had a DOS machine, because it's from way back in 83, 84, it was 83 for Atari, uh, 8-bit, and 84 for um, the, the PC. So a lot of DOS systems had Alley Cat. So I'm sure a bunch of people, a bunch of our listeners who are from that time period who had a DOS machine are like, Alley Cat? Oh my god, Alley Cat! But that would that's not the game we're talking about. That was made by Bill Williams, and uh, he is somewhat, or was somewhat of a prodigy, somewhat of a uh, auteur developer. Uh, he died incredibly young at the age of 38, and that's important, because uh, uh, he uh, had cystic fibrosis, so he basically learned to program and just poured all of his energy for about 10, 12 years into poured all of his energy into making games so he just put out several like really high concept really interesting games uh, his first game was called salmon run and that was an atari 800 game where you played as a salmon uh making that you know the salmon run where you know salmon goes up the up the stream or whatever that was the game uh he then did a game called necromancer which is a hugely interesting game if you've never played or heard of necromancer and that's an atari 800 game uh and that's this a lot of these games are similar in sort of like how they present themselves because it's a game with three sets of mini games that are interconnected and I highly, highly, highly recommend Necromancer. It's not the game we're talking about, but it is uh, kind of proof that this Bill Williams guy did actually have a really strong idea of what he, what he was going to do. Uh, yes, then he I... did a couple of other games. He did some other Amiga games, including a Sinbad game. He did a game called... Pioneer Plague, which is not what you'd think. It's actually a game where you fly around in a spaceship and uh, shoot things. So who knows why it's uh, called Pioneer Plague. And he sort of capped off his career by making a Monopoly game and uh, Virtual Bart. And he was so disgusted with the industry and corporates that he left forever um, in Man, 1992. Man, he did not deserve that at no. all. Now, here's so, the thing about Bill Williams and a lot of his games. A lot of them have this kind of overarching theme where they're kind of like a bunch of mini games kind of put together and kind of connected this strategy element. And this one is also similar. And that's where we kind of lead into Knights of Crystallion, which was, I believe, his last Amiga game. I, it's hard to call it his, like, big final epic Amiga game, but it probably the closest thing he has to, like, his final, like, masterwork on the Amiga. Because he knew he was a pretty gifted programmer. Uh, and so what this game is, is you are the leader of a uh, house in a uh, society that lives inside a giant dead skeleton decaying remains of a titan-sized creature from mythology sort of deal. It's a man. Uh, called, yeah, it's called or Orodian, Orodin, or Orodin. Or Orodrid, Orodrim. Orodrid. I, I gotta uh, say, something about this game feels very doomed to me. Is that wrong? Is that incorrect? <laughs> It's it's kind of like it's just ripped out of a bunch of fantasy, I think. Um, so Tanger brought up before, uh, so I don't want to steal his thunder on this, but I thought maybe some of it was inspired a bit by Dune, and I really think you can 
you can feel that in some ways because it has like every, there's a bunch of houses in it that all kind of yeah. uh, run the society it, and run as, the different resources and, and, in it. Yeah, instead uh, for mining for spice though, you're mining for these like crystals that come out of the giant skeleton's brain or something like yes. that. Yes. You go into its skull, and that's the uh, the dungeon component part of this game is going into its skull and exploring the uh, the skull to collect shards of crystal to power your crystallian suit in order to get to the center of the skull to collect a crystallian egg to hatch your crystallian <laughs> horse thing. That's the goal of the game. Why am have I, I Has anyone I don't just know. tuned out yet? Okay. <laughs> the thing of it is, I have to just say... Uh, pardon my French, but what the fuck is this game? Seriously. <laughs> I have tried my best to wrap my brain around it, but no disrespect to the, the part of Mr. Williams, but this game just feels excessive. I might this, say pretentious. This is such a game like, that, like... Really the, up its he, own asshole. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I feel bad saying I, I don't know if it's pretentious. It's mm. just, like... it. Fe- to me, it feels like he had an idea, you know, like... You know, like, build this, like, society sort of concept. And then he thought, you know what? I'm going to, like, okay, so what would they do? Well, you're going to explore this dungeon. So you need to be able to go into the dungeon. So you got to kind of finance yourself. So I I'm going to write that. a economic mini game marketplace that. that you'll have to, to play. <laughs> um, and also you'll need to charge your armor in order to not die. So yeah. you'll have a mini game that you have to play to charge your armor. And then also, because this is about a quest of kind of enlightenment, a kind of spiritual thing. I'm going to put in, like, a board game that I'm going to invent, and I'm going to put that in there, which is a little bit like Go. Not quite, but I can see, I think it's what the inspiration was. And I'm going to put that in, so the player will have to learn that. I'll put a match to win, because whatever. And uh, then he crams all of this into one game, and you get a short manual that mostly talks about the economics of the game. Okay. And uh, you're let loose into the experience. Wait, and wait, wait. it is... <laughs> That's a thing right there that we have to... You have to know about econ- the economic systems of this game. Uh, I, <laughs> I'm really bad at math, so maybe this is my failing. But I couldn't understand how the economical sub part of this game works i mean i thought it would have been just a simple thing like you just have to check whether or not you want this like in papers please i mean a much more modern game so i'm not sure that's a fair comparison but no no it's 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 basically hmm. he he invented a marketplace to like a fictional marketplace that you would then have to engage in the fictional rules of that marketplace in order to generate currency to pay the monks so that they'll let you explore the sismid which is the name of the giant head okay. skull that you have so to explore. So this economy only exists because the monks are greedy assholes, is the impression. That seems to be the, the main gist of it. And <laughs> well, you what have... is it with monks in these weirdo societies? They're, they're like the overlords. But that that, that's where one of those Dune the inspirations, the I think, might yeah, come from, maybe. is Dune has a similar sort of society of like high-ranked religious uh, things mm. going on yeah. within the... Uh, so anyway, so... Um, when it comes to actually playing the game, you have to engage in an economic thing, which yeah. you can learn. Um, it's not it's, actually, it's just not too hard. It's just the interface is insane. Let's, yeah, it's I, built I, by a crazy person. Yeah, is that, the, I, that might be a problem with the Amiga. And like, I mean, it is it is just all entirely controlled by the mouse. But I still didn't exactly know what I was doing when I was attempting to trade off. It didn't even feel like I was really doing anything whenever I went to the Haresh or whatever. That's probably my yes. fault entirely. Yes. But it doesn't we should, make it easy to learn itself. We should say real quick. I just want to say the other games in this sort of style they make a lot more sense. I mean, King of Chicago. You're a mobster in Chicago, and it's just like a mobster movie, everything works like you expect. But this is weird. Everything has this weird name, and the interface doesn't work particularly well, and you that's the problem. I mean, I find that really... I personally find it really interesting that instead of trying to simulate, like, sim something, it's like, sim a crazy society in fantasy that doesn't exist. Like, it's okay. just well, this, this insane thing to 
to try and concept. Th- this is an extremely minor and persnickety point, but why are your menu items moving? I mean, you can still <laughs> hit them easily, but what's with the movement? There's no point to it except to just make it seem weird. Right, the main menu just rotates around the uh, <laughs> the big skull creature in the background because, of course, it does. Why not? I don't it's get just it. It just bugs me. It's just, it, this it game reminds is some me. Strange and alien. I just mm. yeah. Well, I I like it's kind of hammers in how alien the themes are. Mm. But it reminds me of, uh, you know, if you have, like, some modern ironic games, like the Arcane Kids sort of titles, where everything's just kind of weird and broken for no reason. It reminds me of that, but not ironic. Like, there's no irony here. This is this is pretty serious. Like, it's not it's not trying to be funny. It's like, no, this is the game. I'm, I'm pretty serious about I, I this. I think maybe uh, it's because it takes itself too seriously that it didn't really click for me. Because, like, this is a weird high-concept shit that is really trying to justify itself as its own universe, and it hasn't really convinced me. I mean, I don't know if that's just me being too pessimistic, and once again, I feel like I'm being disrespectful to Bill Williams, uh, talking crap about this game, but... I don't know, it's kind of a swing and a miss. I think maybe the problem for me is sort of a too-many-cooks feel, that they could have removed at least two of the many elements this game has and would have uh, become a much better product. I mean, I often believe in the less is more doctrine when it comes to development, but this just kind of feels like it's crushing itself under its own weight. I, I don't know. I, th- I think it's, um, I mean, it's, it is a question of whether you need it less. I do find it quite, it's quite uh, rich to get into once mm. you sort of, there, the learning curve on this game is very very high. I mean, yeah. it, th- almost every word in this game is just made up gibberish. This is just like, yeah, what? Y- y- what ever, is the... Th- th- what? Yeah, Cal, you ever see uh, Ninja Warrior at all? Like, you yes. Know, the, you know the warped wall where it, like a lot of people really blow it in that one where you have to try and run off this angled wall and grab the top? Like, imagine a wall like that the size of a battle cruiser or whatever. That's... That that's that's the wall of entry to this game. I just I, I don't know if I'm overselling it or whatever. It's but just, okay, so some of the stuff that uh, so I can just I'll knock out a little bit about some of the things. Uh, yeah. So you have the trading system, which uh, you produce goods and you set buy and sell prices. And there's stuff like sometimes you can maybe buy other people's like houses, products, and mm. uh, you just determine what sort of quality of other people's stuff you buy. And sometimes you can open trade routes. Yeah. It kind of makes sense once you wrap what it's presenting and how it's folded it up so that's you know you can push that to the side the weirdest thing about that is that for some insane reason the background is constantly scrolling clouds just constantly scrolling yeah. crowds clouds with too? with like this really nice pan flute music for some reason it's just kind of like, huh could, could they not render an actual marketplace or something like what is this a city in the sky that we don't know of? i do I, think most of this know. game was produced by bill williams himself i don't know how much was other people's involvement so i'd be interested to know but the next thing is you get to uh, go to the Proda, which you use to charge your uh, armor. And if you don't charge your armor, you'll die in the dungeon minigame very quickly. So try and charge your armor. And you place little balls of crystal, and you collect those crystals from the dungeon. And it's a power generation minigame. And you actually lump crystals together, and then they'll shoot lightning out to a central pillar structure. This is all stuff that you do in the game. I'm not just making things up as I'm talking. This really happens. Yeah. Um, so and then well. then giant spiders will come down from the roof to eat your crystals, so click them or else they'll eat your crystals. Yeah, don't want them to do that. That part I understood. Um, and then there are these, like, lizards that can... Man-sized lizard creatures that can kill you if you don't throw your bombs at them. That's in the dungeon. This is in the proto. Oh. Uh, the Sismit. Proto. Oops, oops. Don't get confused. I, uh, uh, okay, confused. so once you charge your armor, and that's a whole mini game. It's actually really cool. It's presented in like this pseudo 3D interface that you've got like spinning pillars that you have to uh, aim lightning bolts at by building basically little lumps of circuits that can actually create slightly more complex circuit chains. It's it's pretty cool stuff. It's a very interesting puzzle element. Uh, yes, and then we can say you go. Uh, then we'll do the two mini games. Uh, there is a match two which actually doesn't do all that much but tells you how much you're supposed to donate to the monks if you do it enough which is actually pretty useful because the monks won't tell you how much money they want you just have to guess otherwise they won't let you go in the sismet that's how it works um i think it does some other things but you have to really get deep into that mini game to to get it it's actually quite a good match too um the board shifts every time you click and pieces shift at the same time it's uh 
it is actually quite a challenging match too, yeah, as far as I mean, they go. Yeah, I, I can get my head around uh, what's basically concentration, uh, at least. Uh, it, and then there's the the Bozu, which is a uh, kind of odd uh, Go variant played on a spider's web sort of yeah, thing. This um, one I wasn't able to. I don't really have much. time to go into the rules of Bozu. If you really want to know, you could. Probably have to play the game to figure it out, but yeah, the basically, thing of it is, um, it's actually mandatory in the Dissimit, or however you pronounce that, because there are these monks that, that that's the cave, which is the main gameplay. And then, sorry, am I getting ahead of you? That's fine. Uh, yeah, so when you need to know this because you have to actually complete, you have to beat the, the AI in this in the dungeon in order to progress further in the dungeon, because of course you do. That's why wouldn't you? Rules. If you're gonna put Bozu in, why not? And then you kind of get to the, I believe that leaves the main meat of the game, the Sismit, which is a uh, mouse-driven uh, dungeon exploration thing. I don't believe it's random. I believe it's always the same layout, and I yeah. think even even between multiple copies of the game. So you could actually draw a map and give it to other people if you wanted. But it's a non-Euclidean uh, maze, because of course it is. So there are a bunch of exits on each screen, and when you go through an exit... Who knows where that exit actually ends up? You just have to go through every single exit and figure out which one will eventually lead you to the end of the maze. Yeah, uh, I, which... I had no idea that there was no logical sense that I somehow ended up back at the beginning of it. I mean, I, I took note. Of, my sense of direction is pretty good, and I actually took notice of where everything went. And how the hell did I get back up at the beginning anyway? Like, what's with this skull's geometry? Just like shoots and ladders. <laughs> I just fall. Yeah, it's, sort of... it's all over the place. Um, and, yeah. and in that dungeon, uh, if an enemy touches you, you are you lose a charge in your armor. Uh, in a very nice touch, the game will not instantly kill you uh, when you run low on life. It will warn you that if you get hit one more time, you will die, and you can choose to leave the dungeon and surrender your crystals for that that session that you've just played. Yeah. Uh, I yeah, just well, confused me. I just thought it was some kind of weird way of saying, do you want to go back to the map or do you want to retry the level? Because nothing in this game is said like a regular person would say it. <laughs> no, it's, it's all presented in theme. You get no, like, uh, there's no fourth wall breaking in this game. It's all presented as if you are there. And that's how it works, including... They do acknowledge the mouse, but they only acknowledge the mouse to get you to do what they want you to do, like left click to uh, continue, left click, right click to not do this thing. You know, like that's that's how that works. Um, and the, I think that the dungeon is kind of a cool little like the system is kind of pretty cool because it's you right click to move through the dungeon um, and you left click to shoot fireballs out. And mm -hmm. you can shoot up three fireballs at once and they'll travel across the map and then explode quite dramatically. And if you uh, hold down the left click, the balls will travel faster while you're holding it down, which is just because, yes, of that. Mm -hmm. that's how that works. Eventually, you'll go through a door, uh, which you won't be able to see, but when you leave the area, a door will open, and it will break open the copy protection suddenly, where it will ask you to yeah. <laughs> uh, a question from the uh, poetry supplement that comes with the game. And uh, if you don't answer it correctly, you won't be able to progress in the game. You have to win a game of Bozu. And then the game basically repeats with harder and longer dungeons with more graphics until I think you get your Crystallion. And that is my complete explanation of Crystallion the game. I'm going to be you. honest, uh, I think that the dungeon crawling is relatively okay. Uh, like, that that's the part that's easiest to understand, at least for me. Um, it's just that all this other stuff tacked onto it on the side feels superfluous. It just feels like... The dungeon crawling could just mainly be its own game if this game was more straightforward and committed to the central gameplay idea. I would have liked this more, but uh, I don't know. Maybe I'm just an idiot, but just <laughs> a lot of it outside of the tism, it just felt like it didn't want to really be learned. I, I, I don't know. It, mm. it, it is an utterly confusing, very unique Thing. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm not going to deny that this game's unique. It's I almost hate using this word because it smacks of pretension, but I um, admit it's a very visionary title. Uh, if nothing else, it's uh, you know artistic in its own way, and it is quite committed to its own universe for better or worse. Uh, whether or not that makes it enjoyable, I I mean, for someone, some people probably like this. I. 
I don't think I did exactly, but I don't want to be too unfair to this very, very strange game. I just have no idea how the hell to rank it. Uh, yes, I mean, if, I mean, it, it is like a 1990 game. Like it's, yeah. it is kind of early on, and it's <laughs> a uh, Amiga exclusive, and the Amiga's so, yeah. not super well known for having, you know, strong RPG titles. Really, it's not really a a system that had that many like role playing games. As far as I remember, it's mostly known for platformers. Um, this is this... leagues beyond Hurricane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't even compare the two. I mean, well, uh, kudos that we have another exclusive Amiga game on here. But <laughs> it actually uses a uh, special Amiga graphics mode called Ham Mode, uh, <laughs> which I just wanted to say Ham Mode. Uh, it, <laughs> it, it it's it's short for Hold and Modify, oh. but uh, it's it's a it's a mode that uh, was very rarely used in games, but it's the high color mode, um, and there's. Mm. There's a variety of reasons why it wasn't used in most games, uh, because it's actually really difficult to use and it doesn't work well with animation. But uh, this game does use, so it's a very bright game uh, for the most part in yeah. most of the uh, areas. That's so it uses colorful. a very odd mode. Yeah, I'll give it that too. It's a very colorful game also. <sighs> Here's my thought. There was real effort put in this game. He was mm. trying to do something unique and new. Something that no other game had probably ever done and he succeeded. I mean, it is a very unique game, a very personal game, I'd say. I, I would say so. You can see elements of the creator in here, uh, for sure. Uh, and I do find that that's quite, it's quite interesting that I think this game is so odd and so difficult that even if you've played a lot of games, you'll struggle to find a sort of point of reference in this game to really hold what the game is trying to do and really, like, focus on it. Because like, you can get the dungeon stuff, and you can get some things, but it's like, but it kind of fits together. How do you, how do you play it all so that it works? And it's, it's a confusing game. And also, um, the game does have it's. I wouldn't describe it as a real time system, but uh, each era you go into, the game progresses a, uh, a time. Like it goes a season forward every time you choose an option on the main yeah. screen, and that's how the uh, econ economic system moves forward every season. Uh, there's costs and expenditures and. The system moves, so you have to keep an eye on your expenses. You can't just focus on the dungeon, and at the same time, you probably should learn Bozu and play some uh, play some of the uh, other game, which I can't remember the name of it. Dar Darda, Dar Darda, or something. I, uh, that's the match two game. I can't remember the name. Yeah, of Yeah, but... yeah, cards. Deketa De was it? Hmm? Yeah, that's probably it. Yeah, because it's like deck, like deck of cards. Uh, this game is remarkably interesting. If you haven't played i'm glad this one was this was another one that i'm like wow i yeah didn't this know is, this game existed <laughs> this is a game i'm not sure any other podcast would have talked about in millions of years i mean prove me wrong if there is anything else ever recently that's talked about knights of the crystal but uh i am actually glad we've covered this one uh it's just you know i just me i i I don't know what to say about it. It's just so weird. And I don't know if it's actually good or not. I, I, I'm at a loss here. I'm just baffled. I did find the experience of uh, playing this game and, and learning what it was doing. I found that quite enjoyable to actually uh, engage with this game. Because uh, that was something that I was, I was quite impressed with. That Most of the systems don't feel... They don't feel tacked on. They feel like they're whole components. Mm. Even if it only exists to do one system for another system, each one doesn't feel like it was a slap together rush job. Each segment of the game feels coherent and built correctly, okay. which uh, I, I think is good. We're going to have to move to ranking this one, I think, because uh, I could try and determine what the hell this game is about all day, okay. but well, we'll have to first off, have you to rank it. Place it somewhere, and then I'll like I want to shortchange this game just because I didn't really gel with it doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. Uh, okay, well, my placement at the moment would be above Golden Axe. That, that seems a bit up, high. That far up though, dude. I just put it wherever I'm putting it. You guys it doesn't mean I uh, wanted to put it on the upper half of the list. <laughs> I find it an interesting game, a very, very interesting game. Um, 
I'd say that... close to like Techno Cop, I think. Yeah, unfortunately, I I think I think Techno Cop is a bit low for it, like a little low. I mean, you're putting up a low Revolution X. Is that is that what you want? Is that what you're doing? Like, I was going the, to the I, most... I, I understand Revolution X. I don't know if I'd say it's good, but it makes sense. Uh, I was going to put it below Riven, so maybe that's just me being too harsh. Okay, we'll, we'll work for, up from Revolution X, at least, I guess. I mean, uh, I, I mean, I don't know. I think it's a, I think it's an interesting game, and I think if you can if you can get into it, you'll probably enjoy it. Uh, if, though. It's not, it's not his best game. I think uh, both Alley Cat and Necromancer are, are more approachable, uh, and even his other Amiga games... Uh, Mind, is it Mind Jack? I don't think so. I think it might be Mind. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> I, I think Mind Jack's the the PlayStation game, but he he's got like a Mind Hacker, a Mind Warp, or some some other game, which I think is a little bit more sensical. Not very much more sensical, by the way. Like his his all of his games are a little off, but um, it is an it is an interesting game. Uh, if you guys want to push it down, that's that's you know I can't question that. I would probably. You know, if I, I would still want it a little higher, I because Revolution X, yeah, but it's such a like it's it's a bland shooter that well, it's got it just Smith, exists. Man. Music is the weapon. <laughs> I I don't care about Aerosmith. <laughs> yeah, I don't never care. But but you know, like this game tries something and it's very very high concept, very very interesting, and it is a oratorial game. It is a game that. You know, if this game, this game would actually make more sense released today. You know, like some crazy it indie would. was just like, this is the game I wanted to make and, and I made it. Cause... It would be probably better to explain in uh, a modern game scope where if you can't even give an elevator pitch for your game, then it's not going to fly at all. But I mean, it's it's a, it's a slice of life simulator set in Orodin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just, uh, okay. Yeah, it's. It's a, it's a tough one. I can I we can we put it above uni races? You know, I was going to say between Clash of Demon Head and Commander Keen in this case. I like I would like to put it. I mean, obviously, I like to put it above King because I already said that. But I am willing to say that this game, you know, it is it is a, Commander Keen is a technical accomplishment. That's an okay game. Yeah. This game is. I don't know how much of a technical accomplishment it is. But it Kane is super approachable. You can yeah. get Kane. That's a good I, point. I don't know. You So how about This game between, is not approachable. No. Uh, okay, how about between Kane and Uniracers then? I, I think that's that's fair. As much I do like this game and I would, you know I would put it high because I think it's actually a really interesting title. But I'd be happy with I wouldn't be happy below <laughs> Revolution X, but I can handle okay. uh below below Kane because at least Keen, you get what you, you know, you get the game, you get a game, it makes sense, it's technically quite good. Uh, this game is an interesting okay, accomplishment. Okay, yeah, I will say that Chrysalian is certainly very remarkable, even if I didn't really cater to it all that much. It's outstanding, it's, I don't know, do we even want to go so far to call this one a hidden gem in a way? I would say it's a hidden gem on the Amiga because uh, often with yeah. the Amiga, people dismiss most of the library like, oh, it's mostly like just pretty platformers that don't play very well. And then you've got a game like Crystallion, which is just this most huh. like this game feels like it would have been a like a, it feels more like a PC game, like it would have been a, a PC simulation game. Like wow. that's what it feels like. You know, and uh, yet co comparing it to other Euro platformers, I never thought of it like that before uh it does definitely stand out a lot more than those i can say that like on the amiga in 1990 there was very little like this and you know that's yeah. a specific well, game that presents a very alluring world because you actually get a world presented to you it's very very well detailed in, in how it presents itself it's just a game that i don't think very many people will be able to actually get into because you have to read the manual, then you have to actually discern what the hell the manual was telling you, and then you have to put it into practice, and that's a lot of steps, and that is probably why it has been pushed quite lower, but if you can get into it, it's well worth giving it a shot. If you can't, uh, it is grab it is. Necromancer. Uh, or Alley Cat. 
Or Alicat. Uh, you can grab... You don't really need the manual for Alicat, but maybe read the manual for Necromancer because it's a bit weird, but... Uh, those are interesting games, and they're a lot easier to actually get into, and you can see what they're about. And then if you want a game that makes almost no sense until you play it for a couple hours, uh, load up Crystallion. And if you want something like Crystallion, but a bit less unique, you could play uh, Defender of the Crown or King of Chicago. Those are pretty impressive for 80s games. Well, rest in peace, Bill Williams. I'm sorry I didn't really take the Crystallion much, but I do have to give credit to where it is. It's an extremely unique game, and I'm glad we got so much discussion out of it.